All right, guys, this is the uh, Wounded Warrior Project Knife. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm building a blade. I uh, cut out my stencil. All right, it'll look something like this, not exactly the same. Uh, but I have all my products here. This is Coca-Cola wood. This is how you buy it in these blocks. Uh, not really sure. Uh, I think it comes from Mexico. I'm not really sure you guys can correct me on that, but some people say they are allergic to this type of wood. Uh, I don't know what it is. It can be a little bit irritating on the nose and in the mouth, so you know, try to wear a respirator if you can use it. Um, the pins I'm going to use is a, uh, you can see that right there, it's a mosaic pattern. So that's pretty cool right there, it's brass. I have my brass sheet. Okay, this is all big chunk of brass right here. It's about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to use that for bolsters. And I'm, my, the steel I'm going to use is, uh, I don't know if you can see that right there, S35VN. Okay, it's about a quarter of an inch, maybe 3 16 CM, CPM. All right, and that's from the New Jersey Steel Baron. And you can see right there, he marked it Wounded Warriors. All right, he, brought, he said he wrote campaign, but basically that was very nice of him. New Jersey Steel Baron donated the steel. Uh, this is stainless steel. It's actually a very highly rated uh, stainless steel. Um, so, you know, if you were going to buy that piece by itself, it's a couple bucks. It's not cheap. So, um, thank you very much for that. So, what I do now is I got to do some prep work. I have to cut this in half. And I have to sand the scales, get those ready. I got to cut the steel. All right, basically what I do is I draw my design on here. I could pretty much stencil it out, cut that, and then just go from there, all right? Um, I probably, if I get a chance, I'll try to put it all together today just so I could dry fit it, and then it has to go to heat treat. And then when it comes to heat treat, I put it all back together, and I glue it all back together, and then it'll look like a real knife. Um, just want to say thank you very much for the support. Thank you for the understanding. Uh, there are a lot of projects that I'm working on right now and I just want to get this in with the next uh, batch of heat treat uh, because like I said heat treat takes about two to three weeks to get back to me and I want to make sure that uh, I can get this in a timely manner if you guys uh, missed out on the last couple videos basically what I'm doing is uh, to win this knife what you have to do is you go up to the link I'll link it below or you can go to my website threeriverblades.com you click on the link, it'll bring you to the Wounded Warriors Project uh, donation page. The highest donation will win this knife. Okay, so, and you can see underneath the graph, it'll say who, who what bids are in. Uh, aside from that, if you donate $10, I will put you in a raffle to win one of my mosquitoes. Uh, $10 or more, and you're already in the raffle. That's two ways to win. One is to get into a uh, donation. Uh, highest donation wins this knife and then $10 will put you in a raffle to win a mosquito. All right, enough about that. Let me get into uh, making it. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I got my bandsaw here, and uh, I have to cut this block in half. Yeah, you can use a table saw or a chop saw if you like. This is what I have. I have a bandsaw. So I'm just gonna line it up, head to the center. back it off when it starts getting too hot. Just trying to stay down the center. All right, so, uh, you know, this stuff, it will eat up your blade uh, because it is hardwood and there's a lot of heat going on, so you just gotta be careful, but coca bola wood looks really nice. I mean, look at the, right. look at the style. So I got here. my belt sander, and basically what I got is, uh, this is 60 grit rough. All right, so it's gonna be, uh, it's a brand new belt. I'm gonna wear it out in a little bit. And I don't wanna burn the wood. I just wanna get it to where it's uh, cleaned up. And you can see all those beautiful lines. All right, so I got my handles, I got my uh, scales done, about a quarter of an inch. All right really nice and then I made another set just in case okay 
Always have two because when working with wood, sometimes they split, and if they split, they're garbage. So better than cutting it later, I'd rather cut it now. And of course, I always have a nice another set. Also, when you are sanding hardwoods, uh, make sure you use a new belt, not a used belt, because friction will burn wood. So if you're using a used belt and you press too hard, you'll burn the wood and it'll, it'll leave burn marks and it'll look terrible. So you don't want to do that. All right, so now that I got my stencil, I got my steel. I'm gonna clean it up with a little bit of acetone uh, just to make sure that the glue sticks and to get off all the debris. Now, the glue that I use is basically Elmer's. It's Elmer spray adhesive, all right? It's not, it, it's a decent glue, but it's a craft glue. So it's not, it's not awesome. It's just the way it is, you know? It's, it, it'll come off with heat. And what I do is I center my piece, spray a little glue on there, spray a little glue on my paper, and then, you know, let it, let it air dry a little bit. I, I don't mind about the bench because it's my workbench, but uh, you don't want to get that on a kitchen table. Your wife will kill you. So, FYI on that one, guys. And what I do is I pretty much want to center this piece. All right, this is a 12 inch piece of stock, as you can see right here. I always leave a little bit in the back and a little bit in the front because you never know uh, if that handle is going to work for you. Like I said before, the uh, the dimensions on paper don't always work in 3D dimensional life. So, uh, you know, always keep that in mind. If you are going to use a paper stencil, always keep at least a half inch in the back, half inch in the front. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my angle grinder and I'm going to cut this uh, blank out. All right, guys, before I go any further, there's many ways to cut out the steel. Uh, I use just a regular angle grinder uh, with metal cut bits, the thin ones, not the thick ones. Uh, the thick ones are for grinding, these are for cutting, and I use my uh, bench vise. Now, normally uh, what I would do is make sure you have all your protection on, all right? So I don't care what type of respirator you get, metal dust in your lungs is very, very bad, okay? I can't, can't tell you that enough. Uh, you will get uh, metal poisoning from it, uh, and you can die from it. So long exposure to metal dust will kill you. That's why you need a good respirator. Always have eye protection, good set of, um, good set of gloves, and I always wear my hearing protection, all right? So these are decent muffs. You can get earplugs if you like, but uh, I'm gonna start to cutting, so make sure you lower your volume for this part. Now that I'm all messed up, you can't hear it. as much as you can with the bandsaw or the angle grinder uh, because you'll save on belts that way, all right? Uh, anybody that thinks that this is an easy job, uh, you're out of your mind. It's just, it's a lot of work, but you know what? It's a passion. I love doing it. There's a lot of guys that love doing it, and uh, I can't think of a better way to uh, express a piece of art and also have a very useful tool, so. I'm gonna to get to the belt sander now, and the belt sander is gonna take a lot of this other mess off. This belt is a 36 grit, very aggressive belt. Uh, this will take off a lot of steel. Uh, now, being that this is a C, uh, CPM steel, it's a lot harder than regular carbon or, or other steels. Um, so it will wear the belts, and you will wind up using a lot more uh, discs and belts and stuff like that so it's not a big deal just got you know that's part of knife making so I'm gonna clean this up with this uh, this grinder
now I got my profile pretty much made up and you could see I was using some of the top wheel uh, to my advantage uh, and that's just one of the tricks that I use just use the whole belt I mean you could use the top rollers the platen the bottom roller whatever gets the design that you're looking for and I really wanted to make a design that's really comfortable for the hand and I think I've accomplished that um, also what you want to check is constantly check your scale now that you've, you've got your scale in there you got to make sure that it fits inside your handle and once I put this on here uh, I'm pretty confident that I can make it work um, so I'm not really too worried about that but uh, it's gonna look really nice all right, so probably have to do some cutting and designing here and there, but I think overall it'll look really nice. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean it up. Usually what I do is I put this sucker on low. Don't really need an aggressive belt. Uh, you can use 36. It's not a big deal, but I'm going to use a lower speed, so it's not going to be that heavy, and I just want to clean up the flat. So, just using a magnet to hold it. Clean all the junk off. Alright, so here comes the hard part. Now basically what you got to do is you got to cut a bevel into this. Uh, there's a lot of ways of, of marking it. You could use marking die, you can use a sharpie pen, but what you got to do is you got to bevel the sides. I usually do a flat grind uh, just because it's fast, it's simple, and it works very well. Some people use hollow, some people use uh, you know basic uh, scandy grind, but I'm just going to use a nice little flat grind. As you can see the profile is pretty decent. Uh, I left this little notch here because I'm going to put a piece of brass up there and I want to make sure that brass comes down here and it's going to look really really nice. So for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bevel it and I'm not going to go all the way to the end but I'm just trying to hit that center line right there and uh, put a little bit of an edge on there and uh, See, some guys works. use uh, clamps or jigs. I don't use that. I just go by eye. Uh, it's 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 whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm you know I've been doing it for a while and, and I'm comfortable with that. I tried jigs, but jigs just don't work for me. They wind up getting in the way more than actually helping. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a plunge cut. I'm going to push into the steel, round it a couple times, and go back and forth, back and forth until I reach a point to where I think that the line should be. And I'm only gonna, I'm probably gonna go maybe halfway up. I don't want to go too far with this because it's a very pointy knife, uh, and I want to make sure that it doesn't doesn't warp and heat treat. So. So now that I got my bevels in, as you can see, it's more of a saber grind than a hollow grind, uh, flat grind. But I leave it low for the simple fact that I don't want this tip to get too thin. And when I go to heat treat, I'd rather have a little more edge, a little more meat on it, so it doesn't warp. 
uh, and then what I'll do is I can raise the grind later after heat treat, so that's fine. So I put a 60 grit belt on, and what I'm going to do is smooth out all these handles, all these rough cuts, and then uh, get to flat polishing here, and then drill some holes for the handles and such. Uh, this is just a drum uh, drum bit that I have and it helps me to get in between all these curves and everything else. I usually try to make it a little bit smaller uh, than that so I can get into the tight corners and get all those uh, cuts out. So basically, you can see the knife's coming out pretty good. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure for the bolsters. I want to try to get the bolster, see where this, this point is right here all the way up to the thumb ramp. Uh, I think that'll be a good place for it. Uh, and I have this big slab right here, and I'm going to have to make it big enough. So when I do put pins in there, they'll stay. So I'm thinking about here, maybe like halfway, something along those lines right there, something like that. And of course, I'm going to have to cut out two of them, uh, one for each side. So the only way I know how to do that is, again, to use the uh, saw <coughs> and uh, you know, use my uh, angle grinder. And from there, just use the belts like like I normally been doing so we'll work it out that way and uh, then I'll put the holes in all right now brass is relatively um, soft compared to all the other metals, so it's just a matter of working it on the belt sander into a piece. Alright, so I cut my pieces of brass. You can pretty much see where it's starting to come together now. So I drew my line right there, and then I got my wood. Alright, so that's pretty much what it's going to look like, as you can see. Very classy look, very classy style. And uh, I'm going to have to do a lot of adjustments on the fly, but uh, I just want to make sure I get all the holes correct. And then once the holes are done, I can adjust the wood and everything else. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to clamp both pieces uh, onto the brass like that, clamp it, and then punch a hole right through it. Uh, I'll probably maybe do one or two holes, uh, maybe one big pivot in the center. Uh, you just don't want that that thing to move, so you can solder it on. I've seen guys that solder it on, uh, but again, you know this is uh, this is gonna be a very classic knife. All right, guys. So I got uh, my two-inch bolster in there. Uh, this is probably like an inch and a half. And I got my two pins, quarter inch pins, and now I'm going to drill in my other pins for uh, the wood handle. This part is actually pretty simple because uh, I'm not using the wood first. I'm going to drill the holes first, and then when it comes back from heat treat, I'll slap it. I'll slap the slab on there, and then go from there with it. So it'll be a lot easier. Now this is a chamfer bit. Uh, basically, what I do is I chamfer out the holes. Uh, so when the glue comes in, uh, it has a place to adhere to. And of course, when you put the pins in, uh, it doesn't get bound up on the sides, and then you wind up smashing the pin. So this really does a lot to help out. guys there she is this is the uh, wounded warriors project knife 
Uh, it is not heat treated yet, so I didn't put everything together. There will be another video when it comes back from heat treat. I usually get it to this level right here, and then once it comes back from heat treat, uh, it's gonna look pretty dirty. Something looks like this. This has already been heat treated, and then I gotta come back, clean it all up, polish it up, and then put the handles on. So this is what I'm calling the Wounded Warriors Project Knife. It is made out of CPM S35V, which in my understanding is in really, really good steel, stainless steel, uh, very hard. Uh, I, did, I did learn a little bit about it. Um, it was eating up my belt. It's not, it's not the same as working with carbon steel, but stainless steel lasts you forever. Um, you know, all steels will last you forever, but this one, very little maintenance on it. And then once I polish it up, it's going to look beautiful. Uh, basically, what I decided to do was make uh, brass bolsters. And the brass bolsters will fit on the knife like this. Okay, and I'm going to have some solid pins through there. And then, when I'm done with that, I will put the coca bola wood on there. So if you can get a little bit of an idea of what it's going to look like, uh, once it's all carved out and cleaned up, it's going to look beautiful, guys. I'm just, just letting you know. Uh, it's definitely worth any donation that, you, that you're looking for to uh, win this knife. So, you know, if you have a chance, go up there and uh, start your donation bidding. Uh, it will take about two to three weeks to get that back from heat treat. So, I'm thinking it's now September. Uh, I'm thinking October this knife will be ready, uh, you know, but you can start bidding on it because this is what it's going to look like. Um, as far as the pins go, like I said, I'm using some really nice mosaic pins. Let's see if it can, if it'll auto adjust there. There you go. Really nice mosaic pins, coca bola wood, brass bolsters, brass pins, you know the steel. I'm going to give you some measurements on this. It's not a small knife, guys. Not at all. All right, so the overall length of this blade is 10 and a half inches. From the blade, Ricasso, all the way to the tip is five inches. From the handle, from this point, all the way to the back is another five inches. So it's a really nice blade. And uh, I can't thank um, the New Jersey Steel Baron .com. Go up there, check it out. He's the one that donated the steel. I did put my maker's mark up top as opposed to putting it down here at the bottom because I didn't want to mess up the uh, brass. Uh, 3 16 inch thick, really nice. Uh, it's got a thumb ramp here. Uh, once you put the brass on there and all the pins, it's going to look magnificent. I'm telling you guys, really really nice blade um, I am still trying to find somebody to donate a leather sheath if you don't want to donate it or you feel that it's not for you I will buy the sheath I just need somebody to make a leather sheath for this blade because I want to sell it as a set I want to have a really nice leather sheath and a really beautiful classic knife with brass and coca bola wood so if you're interested let me know just PM me and uh, I'll get this off the heat treat as soon as humanly possible. Again, just wanted to show you the knife overall. Uh, I am gonna post this up on the, um, the page. So if you are interested in uh, donating, you could just click on the link below. All the information's there. And uh, if you don't know, basically what I'm doing is, this is gonna be a bid, uh, uh, bid to win for the big knife. And then I'm also auctioning off a uh, mosquito uh, if you donate ten dollars or more you will be in the raffle for a mosquito so ten bucks or more or bid for the big one so it's, it's up to you guys so just want to make sure you guys take a look at that nice scandy uh, this is a uh, saber grind I might go a little bit higher with it but uh, I needed to leave enough on there for uh, heat treat I didn't want it to warp All right, guys, go up to uh, threeriverblades.com or go to the link below, take a look at it. Uh, I hope you guys will start bidding soon. I'm trying to raise uh, 2,500 bucks for the Wounded Warriors. Um, and basically in October, probably November, it'll probably end. So thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching.